And I know we're two weeks into this year. And the reason I'm doing this episode is I realized that you may have already felt like those habits have gone a little bit into the crapper. And you may be feeling bad about that. So I want to give you some strategies on how you can get back on the horse, how you can reinstitute those habits and make sure that you stick with them for the long haul and give you some ideas of systems that you can put in place so when you feel yourself slipping, you can make sure that you don't completely fall off the wagon. Welcome to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast with Bree Noble. Bree is a musician, entrepreneur, speaker, and founder of Women of Substance Music Radio and Podcast. Bree's interviews with successful female musicians and industry pros are both inspirational and informational. She also answers your questions about the music business. Bree is on a mission to help you create great music, connect with your fans, and grow your business, and to truly become a female entrepreneur musician. Hey, this is Brie Noble, and I want to welcome you to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast, where we talk about making great music, connecting with your audience, and growing your business. And if you've just discovered our show, or maybe you haven't listened for a while, I just wanted to let you know kind of the format that we've been doing lately. I've been doing four solo episodes a month. So every Monday, I go live on Facebook, and I do kind of a teaching session, and it's an interactive, we call it Indie Interactive, and then that will go live every Wednesday on this podcast. And then every other Monday, we come out with an interview with an inspiring female artist who talks about how she makes money from music, all the tactics she's using in marketing, and anything else that I can get out of her that is going to be valuable for you guys. That's what those interviews are for. So in 2018, we've changed up our days a little bit. We are doing interviews every other Monday like we were before, but we're also doing solo episodes every Wednesday. So just wanted to let you guys know what to expect on the show and our schedule. And I also wanted to mention that this episode of the Female Entrepreneur Musician is brought to you by my Smart Goals Workbook. If you feel like you've got so many ideas, so many things going on, so many shiny objects out there that you think you should be working on and you don't know where to start, I'm telling you, getting this Smart Goals Workbook is really going to help. It's going to help you hone down what you need to be working on and choose your goals wisely and then figure out how you can achieve those goals. So in order to grab that, just go to femmusician.com slash goals. That's F as in female, E as an entrepreneur, musician.com slash goals. Or you can just go to the show notes for this episode at femmusician.com slash 131. That's for episode number 131. And there'll be a button right there as well. So go grab that. So this episode picks up where that smart goals workbook leaves off in that when you create these goals, some of these goals are, you know, for the next 90 days, you want to improve something. And that involves having a habit, whether it's daily or weekly, that you keep doing and making sure that that thing is getting focused on very, very often. So you actually improve in that area, whether it's working on songwriting every day, whether it's an exercise program, whether it is Um, spending a certain amount of time, you know, engaging on social media or doing marketing tasks, whatever that is, that is a habit that you need to develop. And I know we're two weeks into this year. And the reason I'm doing this episode is I realized that you may have already felt like those habits have gone a little bit into the crapper. And you may be feeling bad about that. So I want to give you some strategies on how you can get back on the horse, how you can reinstitute those habits and make sure that you stick with them for the long haul. And as I said, I record these episodes on Facebook Live, but unfortunately there were a few audio issues and I just couldn't abide it. So I'm recording it over for you to make sure that you get this material. So my first tip for making sure you keep your habits for the long haul is putting them on your calendar. If you guys have been through my Get More Done in Less Time training, you know that day four is all about calendar. And we put either some specific time slots or some blocks where we work on music-related things or habit-related things or things that are related to specific goals on our calendar so we don't forget, so we don't get you know lost in all the other things that are going on in life 
and just forget to do those things. And then when we remember them, we're just like way too tired. It's nighttime and stuff. So um, you do need to have a calendar that works for you because obviously it doesn't help to put it on your calendar if you don't look at your calendar. So make sure that you choose a calendar format that's going to work for you, whether it's Google Calendar or some other online calendar, Outlook Calendar, Cal, whatever works for you, um, or some kind of you know, physical calendar, something that hangs on your wall, a day planner, but make sure that you choose a version of a calendar that's actually going to work for you. Because if you don't feel comfortable with it, you may just be fighting with it all the time and it may feel heavy and you may feel like you just don't want to, you know, use that as part of your system because it's not feeling natural to you. So choose your calendar wisely and then use it. My second tip is coupling this habit that you want to form with a habit that you've already formed or that you enjoy. So one thing that I do is every morning, I really enjoy drinking my coffee and just kind of sitting there and relaxing. But I do feel like maybe that time would be a little bit wasted if I just sat there and drank my coffee. So what I do is I actually spend that time going through some important emails and responding to them. And so there's still that like enjoyable thing of where I'm like semi relaxing and enjoying my coffee, but I'm getting something done. And it, because I'm coupling it with something I enjoy, like my coffee, then I'm not feeling like, oh, I don't want to get to these emails or they, it just seems like drudgery. It just becomes a part of my coffee habit that that's what I do while I'm drinking my coffee. And it makes me more interested in actually doing those emails because I get to enjoy my coffee. So another thing that I used to do too is that I had a habit of walking every day for a certain amount of time. And I started to feel like that time's a little bit wasted. Is there a way I can make better use of that? And so what I would do is I would have that be my songwriting time if I couldn't fit it in any other time. So I could kind of double dip on my time. And either what I would do is maybe I needed to listen to some songs. I was trying to write something that was in a similar style to something else. And so I would listen to that and kind of get inspired by it. Or if I was working on some lyrics or a melody and I was just getting stuck, what I would do is like listen to that before I leave or read over the lyrics before I leave and just let them ruminate in my mind while I'm walking. Because when I would get out there and just have no distractions and my brain would just start working on the problem, then I would oftentimes come back with a new melody or a a lyric fix that really made it so much better that I wouldn't have if I would have just been sitting there at my desk or my piano, like so focused on it. So think about some things that you already do. Maybe you have to, you know, go on the train or the subway to work and you can couple that with something else, whether it's making that your songwriting time where you can just maybe write in your journal and then, you know, get some lyrics out of that or listening to some music that might inspire you toward writing the kinds of songs that you want to write. Just think about ways that you can include things you want to make a habit with things you already do. My number three tip when you've had trouble sticking to a new habit is forgive yourself, but don't forget. What I mean by that is we've got to be kind to ourselves. We cannot expect ourselves to be perfect. We are all human. If we weren't human, we'd be like robots and we just set a program and we would do those habits every day like clockwork. But obviously that is not the case. We can't expect us ourselves to be perfect every time. So we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to forgive ourselves, but we need to not forget because we need to learn from why that habit wasn't being completed when we wanted it to. Maybe it's because it just isn't fitting into our lifestyle. Maybe we need to be a little bit more flexible with what we want for our habit. Maybe what we chose is just not going to work for us and we need to tweak it a little bit. I don't mean give up on it, but maybe change it a little bit. Change the time we're doing it. Change how much we're doing. Change, you know, how long we're doing. All of that. Um, Or maybe just, you know, the angle from which we're approaching this new habit. We need to be able to think, you know, critically about why we're not succeeding and make those changes so we can succeed. Or maybe we're just screwing up, you know, maybe we just are being lazy. Maybe we're just, you know, in avoidance mode, whatever it is, and we just need to bite the bullet. That's why we need to not 
forget. Forgive ourselves, it's okay, but don't forget because we need to learn from our mistakes and figure out how we can make the changes that we need to, whether it's in the habit or whether it's within ourselves, our attitude, whatever it is, to make sure that we do succeed with this habit in the future. And on that same note of not expecting perfection out of ourselves is my tip number four, which is if you can't do your full time with that habit each day, then do it anyway, even if it's just for a very, very short time. So for example, if you've got time set aside to work on music, uh, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday from, I don't know, 3 to 5 p.m. And then something comes up you have to schedule an appointment for your kid to go to the doctor or, you know, you had to take your car in to get fixed or whatever, you know, life gets in the way, right? But just because those things happen doesn't mean that that day is completely shot. Maybe your appointment is not till 345 and you could work on music for, you know, 20 minutes before you had to leave. Maybe you could take music with you and do it while you're at your appointment or find something that you can do to fit it in. So it's important in order to build a habit that you actually keep doing that thing on a regular basis. And so even though life gets in the way, we still need to keep that habit rolling, even if it can't be done to its fullest. And I realize this is hard to do. But it's really important because that consistency is what keeps the habit going. And it's so much easier if you fall off and don't do something for a day or two days that are planned, it's so much harder to get back into that routine of doing it again. But if you just do it for a little bit, then you're still doing it. And so you're still into the routine of doing it. Tip number five is to set up your environment for success. And this is just very simple. You know, make it easy for you to accomplish the habits that you want to accomplish by removing barriers for yourself. You know, if you're going to be lifting weights, make sure that your weights are, you know, very close at hand. If you're going to be practicing music, you know, make sure you have a place that you can do that where you feel comfortable. I mean, for example, you know, my daughter just started piano lessons and she doesn't like to practice in front of other people. And she knows that if she has to practice on the piano that's in the middle of the living room, she won't practice because she's got, you know, just that discomfort. So in order to make it easier for herself, you know, we've set up a keyboard in another location where she can practice. So she knows that she's going to feel safe there. She's going to feel comfortable. She's not going to have this resistance to doing this habit of practicing. Another thing that I heard that I really liked was an example of, you know, trying to get a habit of flossing going. And in order to do that, You just need to make the floss, number one, in plain sight, in places that you see it, and then in places where it's going to be easily accessible when you have the time to do it. So, you know, put it on the counter next to your keys, put it, um, you know, by your phone. So when you get up in the morning, you see it because you know you're going to go check your phone. Have it in the car. So when you're just like sitting at a stoplight, you can, you can floss. So, you know, set up your environment So it's very easy to do the things that you want to do that are building habits. And my number six tip is all about accountability. Create ways to keep yourself accountable, whether it's keeping accountable to yourself or keeping accountable to others. I have both self-accountability and outside accountability built into my world. My self-accountability is all about you know, doing a, setting some goals or deciding what I'm going to work on at the beginning of the week that are related to my goals and the habits that I'm trying to form. And then at the end of the week, doing a self-evaluation. Did I really achieve these things? What do I need to work on? You know, you got to build that into your day that you actually spend a little bit of time doing an evaluation of yourself. And then get some outside accountability. I'm very big on accountability and masterminds because it's really helped me a lot. I have several different levels of accountability for myself outside of myself. I have a group that I'm with. I have some individual accountability partners um, and I have some other, you know, like 
specific goals that I'm trying to work toward and I have accountability worked into those by belonging to certain programs. So whatever works for you to keep yourself accountable, you know, it's so much easier when you're just accountable to yourself to blow it off. But when you've got somebody that you've said to, you know, make sure next week that I actually did this thing, ask me about it. That is so different and so much more pressure. It's like when we have voice lessons or piano lessons, you know, we know that we need to go and sing or play for that teacher every week. And we need to show that we've actually made some progress. And in order to do that, we have to spend time on it and have that habit of practicing. And so, you know, having a teacher, part of the value of that is accountability. And accountability is really king when it comes to habits. Finally, I want to encourage you to recommit to your habits daily. You know, when you get up in the morning, just commit. Know that those are the habits that you're trying to form in yourself. Think back over your previous day and the places that you maybe have fallen short. And again, don't beat yourself up, but be like, okay, today, instead of doing this, I'm going to do it this way. And try that and see if that is going to be more successful. But I think just the idea of recommitting daily is so important because we're none of us, again, are going to be perfect. But if we're constantly thinking about it and not trying to put it out of our minds, but daily we're like, okay, this is what I want to do. And how can I do better today to achieve that? That's going to be so powerful in creating that consistency. And one thing that I use that's been really helpful in that area is visualization. And, you know, I've said before, like, I'm not a very woo-woo kind of person. I'm very practical. But for me, visualization has really worked because when I imagine myself achieving the thing that I want to achieve, making the progress that I want through these habits that I've created then it just makes it so real. Like, yeah, I could really do this thing. I imagine myself or visualize myself having achieved that goal that I wanted. And then I kind of reverse engineer that in my mind. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I imagine myself performing on this particular stage. Well, how did I get there? Well, before that, I just had to practice a lot and get really good at this set that I'm going to be performing. And then I have to imagine myself confidently approaching the booking agent for that event and asking for the gig. And before that, I have to, you know, do a bunch of research to figure out, you know, how to get in touch with these people. And when I see myself in my mind doing those things, then when I actually do them, it's almost like they're not new. It's almost like, oh, I've already done these. I feel comfortable with these things because I've imagined myself doing them. So I want to encourage you to to use a little bit of visualization, you know, maybe in your morning routine or, you know, when you've got a little bit of downtime or you're on your walk or whatever, um, or when you're in your weekly evaluation, your own accountability, just imagine Just visualize yourself achieving these things. And I can tell you from experience that it will make it so much easier to actually do them. So I hope you find these seven tips that I have for keeping your music habits and personal habits on track for this year super helpful. And again, remember that you're definitely going to want to go grab that Smart Goals Workbook if you haven't already. It's over at femmusician.com slash goals, and it will definitely help you achieve your goals for this year and develop some great habits. Glad I re-recorded this for you. I think it's going to be so much easier to listen to. And until next week. Now go out and make great music, connect with your fans, and grow your business. Female Entrepreneur Musician has been brought to you by femusician.com and femalemusicianacademy.com. With editing by Jen Eads of 317 Sound Design and music by Stella Ronson.